here in Wellington, the heart of New Zealand, and this documentary is supposed to highlight some of the main issues to do with compulsive consumption. To show you this issue firsthand, we're going to go to the beaches. The problem we have today is rubbish, and not just any rubbish. The rubbish that turns up on our beaches, shores, street sides, roads, everywhere you can think to look that's a public place. When you look closely, you do realise that there is actually a lot on the floor. In particular here we just turned up and there's probably hundreds of bits of rubbish right around me that have often gone overlooked. Oh my gosh! There's like cigarette butts everywhere. Whoa. That's a thing that you use to clean your teeth. It's like a toothpick or a, a floss, floss stick. Well, at the start of the rubbish cycle, you'll find that a lot of it congregates near the beaches after being blown away from rubbish bins and landfill. And so, it usually ends up to something like this. It's not entirely people's fault, but at the same time, it was there, so someone had something to do with it, or didn't dispose of it properly. And see, um, this can lead to even further issues as it gets weathered and broken down by salt and rain and sunlight just degrading and degrading. And over time it gets smaller and smaller and smaller to more little microplastics which smaller creatures can eat and that just goes all through the food chain and just absolutely gets everywhere. Aquatic wildlife can fuse these microplastics and other plastics for foods, leading to an array of health concerns and can often lead to them getting sick and eventually die. Alright, so here we have our symbol of our modern times, the good old mask. However, things with loops mean certain death for many of our marine creatures and even some terrestrial ones. So maybe something like a penguin or a duck comes along and you know it gets caught in the mouth and they try to get it off and just gets around and you know it's not very healthy for them, it makes it a lot harder to eat. Uh, sometimes you get entangled up in wings so they can't swim, can't fly and well death, yeah, everywhere. Approximately one million seabirds die from plastic via ingestion or entanglement each year. We're here outside Freiburg Pool in Wellington, just right around the Oriental Bay. And I found this quite ironic because this is an earthwise conditioner shampoo kit and it's free from sulfates, silicones and parabens and it's made from essential oils and natural botanicals. The product itself is natural and good for the environment or eco-friendly. However, the actual bottle that it's stored in is completely made of plastic and it's hard and I have no idea how long this has actually been here. And this really proves that even though these things are eco-friendly or recyclable, it doesn't mean they naturally decompose. <laughs> 12 billion kilograms of plastic are poured into the oceans every year, consistently making up 80% of all marine debris studied. Bottle cap rings. These things are absolutely dreadful for any living organism. So imagine like you're a bird, like an oyster catcher or something, Bill here, coming along looking for things in the sand potting around and your bill gets boop right into it and then uh, it's a bit stuck. So the bird can't eat, the bird can't eat, goes through its fat reserves and then dies of starvation. So what you need to do with your bottle cap rings is actually just cut them before you throw them away just in case it gets in the environment and kills something. So a big part of dealing with our waste problem is just to take care of your things. Like items like your reusable mask that is perfectly washable, perfectly fine, but now it's just out here, discarded, in the wild, not going to be found again. It, that just adds to the problem, they're going to go find another ma face mask and it's just some other thing to be produced and just take care of your things. It's important to understand, whatever we put into the world will inevitably come back to us one way or another. Whether that be consuming plastics from the fish that we eat, or creating a more hostile world for us to live in, with all the ecological imbalances being created. Alright, so we're up here on Oriental Bay Beach, and we're just going to do a time lapse and just see uh, what we can pick up along here. 
Uh, we're expecting to find quite a bit of microplastics hidden, hidden along all the all the wreckage up here. So let's see what we can find, yeah. So yeah, as expected, uh, we did find quite a bit of microplastics. Jesse did a lot of uh, the microplastic picking up. I focused more on some of the larger things, but yeah, we do a show that to you. Ecosystems have evolved a fine balance over a long period of time, and we're changing the world faster than anything living can adapt to. So today we have probably picked up what is only a small fraction of the amount of waste and rubbish that is currently residing in our ecosystems. I hope we've shown you just how big of a problem this really is and shown that it doesn't just impact us but also impacts all the wildlife and the ecosystems around us. We need to cut off crom at its source, stop producing plastic, vote with your wallets, use alternatives, glass, paper, whatever you can. We can make this a better, cleaner world if we work together. <laughs>